All right, I'm doing another video. Um, last one I done was on uh, bassing your amp. Um, a crucial thing that I left out on that that I meant to put in on the other video I just added on to this one is some amps um, already have bias probes on them. Uh, take the Sun Model T for instance. Um, behind the tubes back here you have a uh, bias probe slot it's red uh, basically you just stick your bias probe in there and you ground off to the chassis and you have a bias adjustment on top and you do the same thing like I mentioned in the other video uh, checking your plate voltage and all that using the Weber bias calculator and uh, you can take and bias this thing absolutely perfect and uh, these amps were already set up that way you could buy some yourself. Um, another thing that I left out on another video that I need to mention in this is there are three different types of tubes that you can get. When you buy an amplifier, um, most amps come with a medium breakup tube set. Um, you have three different kinds, which are um, soft breakup medium breakup and hard breakup um, hard breakup will give you the cleanest sound you can have and more headroom that's the most headroom you could possibly have uh, and what that means is that tube has more vacuum on it uh, a medium tube has a little less vacuum on it and it's sort of the best of both worlds you still got good headroom and you have an earlier breakup point which brings you that output tube uh, distortion um, and then you have a soft breakup, which are normally called uh, red, red dots. Um, those have uh, slight vacuum, and they allow the amplifier or the tube to break up even quicker. And this comes in handy, uh, like, say right now. Uh, I myself, I'm not doing any shows, I'm not playing any gigs. So what I do is when I order tubes I get two sets I get a soft breakup and depending on what amplifier I'm using I, most of the time I get a medium breakup set as well all matched and what this allows me to do is say you know what you would call bedroom playing is I can take put my soft breakup tubes in and I can take and buy some hot that way I can get my output distortion at low volumes instead of having to just crank the amp wide open to get that same oomph you would have uh, playing at a show or uh, recording studio so that's a that's a neat little trick to remember and then if you get ready to hit the road or you're going to a gig it takes maybe an hour to do it right take pull the tubes out put your medium breakup tubes in or your hard breakup tubes and nine times out of ten you don't have to rebuy them it's always good to check the bias you always want to check the bias the only amps that you don't have to check bias on are self biasing amps uh, for example mess boogie rectifiers the single dual and triple rectifiers are self biasing amps jet city is not a self biasing amp sun is not a self biasing amp neither is crate uh, most marshals aren't so on and so on It'll state that it's a self-biasing amp if it is a self-biasing amp. But anyway, you can uh, swap those tubes out, and when you get to the show, you're good to go. Uh, you've got the headroom that you need to, to get out in front um, to set the mix with the rest of the band. Um, also in this video, I'm going to talk about a little bit on amplifier maintenance. Um, a lot of people really don't understand about keeping their amps clean and then what to keep clean and what not to keep clean. So let's take for instance, we'll start with the Jet City here. What I like to do is, you know, at least every six months, I'll take, I'll pull every one of the tubes out. Um, I'll get a Q-tip with 91% uh, rubbing alcohol that has the lowest uh, water content in it. it dries super fast and it won't hurt a thing I pull my tubes out 
And what I do is I take and uh, I swab the contacts. Um, and on the bottom of the tube, you'll have your contacts here. And I take and swab those real good. They get really dirty. Uh, they get a lot of dust in them. Um, and basically that helps keep your uh, amplifier sockets from, from getting dirty and corroded. Right. While I've got all the tubes out, I like to take and come up here. And the first thing I do is I use uh, canned air. Spray all the dust off that I can. And then I come back with a... Uh, rag or a paper towel, just whatever you have, and lightly mist it with um, either water or Windex. Uh, you, you really don't want to use Pledge or any kind of furniture cleaner because uh, that'll leave oily residue. But anyway, I wipe everything down real good, get all the dust off, make everything nice and clean. And then what happens a lot of times, and uh, from what I've seen a lot, is there's a lot of people they'll start getting a little bit of rust on their transformers and it's gonna happen the only way it's not gonna happen is if you have say a studio or a room that's in your house or wherever you keep your amp that is just controlled to uh, a variable extent I mean you'd have to have dehumidifiers humidifiers um, the room would have to stay at a constant temperature um, there's just so many variables in it so you're gonna get rust on your transformers and there's nothing wrong with it it's not gonna hurt a thing uh, the main thing is is don't take a SOS pad or anything else and try to scrape the rust off a lot of people don't understand your transformers uh, the amount of iron in there will contribute to the sound of the amplifier so even though it's just a nominal amount of rust on here if you take that rust off, eventually uh, the transformer is going to keep rusting. You're going to keep rubbing it off. Eventually, it's going to change the sound of the amplifier. And you don't want that. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, if you want more information on that, um, go to mercurymagnetics.com. Uh, they talk a lot about it. Uh, I think Saldano talks a lot about it. And, and there's several different sites you can look us up on. No, there's nothing wrong with the rust whatsoever. Just leave it be. Um, another thing that mainly pertains to the Jet City amps. Um, I see a lot of people complaining a lot that they can't get the low end out of the amp that they want. Um, that it's uh, a mid-rangey, trebly kind of amp. And that is true. Stock. What you can do to change it is you can get different output tubes. I myself personally have JJ uh, EO84s in my output section. And then you can change your preamp tubes. Uh, what I do is I use three tone saw 12A87s and then I use two JJ ECC83s which is the equivalent of a 12A87. And what I do is my number one tube is a JJ then I have one two tone saws another JJ and a tone saw. Um, a good way to take and figure out what tone helped you out is to take and say if you're happy with your clean channel okay you like the tubes uh, your clean channel or, or normal channel or crunch on this amp is fine you like it cool leave that part alone it's very easy to do your crunch channel only uses four preamp tubes and if I remember right the tube that comes in on your overdrive channel is the second from the left um, if you're unhappy with your overdrive channel and you want more oomph to it low end try changing that tube out with a different tube whether it be a 12AT7 or another 12A87 another brand of 12A87 another brand tube um, it'll help vastly Another thing to remember is your presence knob is basically an extra control for your treble. The higher you turn it up, uh, the more treble you have in the mix. So if you're having problems getting low end in, the best thing to do is start off by turning all your EQ knobs all the way up. Turn your presence up to four and a half. Play a couple of chords and nine times out of ten, if you want the low end, you're going to leave, you're going to want to lead the bass all the way up 
uh, depending on what volumes you're playing at. Uh, if you're playing between two and four and a half on your master volume, you'll probably want to leave the bass all the way up. That'll give you your low end. Then come over here and start tweaking your treble and your mid range. Uh, the first thing I would do is I would take and I'd probably turn my presence down to two. I turn my treble down to three, four, something like that. And I'd leave my mid range somewhere in the five to seven range. Uh, and that should get you a nice low end. Um, and then I have your amp set up for more of a hard rock metal tone. Right now, my amp, my crunch preamp is set at three and a half. The overdrive is set at nine. Bass is on nine. Mids is at five and a half. Treble is at two and a half. My master crunch is at two and a half. My master overdrive is at three and a half. My presence is borderlining on two. And that gives me a nice low end, uh, somewhere along the lines of, say, High on Fire, um, Mastodon, bands like that. Uh, anyway, your EQ comes in this a lot. But let's not forget the speaker cabinet. When I got my Jet City speaker cabinet, I loved it. I needed a 212. I had way too many 412s. The problem was, though, is the Jet City branded eminent speakers are equivalent to, say, uh, Celestian 75 watt speakers. And that's what these speakers are. They're 75 watt speakers. Um, so what I did is they're 16 ohm speakers. I took one speaker out and replaced it with a Celestian Vintage 30 16 ohm speaker. And what that does, that helps give you a little more low end and the 70 watt eminence helps the third or the Vintage 30 not sound so honky in the mid range like they're notorious for sounding. And it actually gives the amp a nice balanced tone. Uh, whether you're playing um, clean to hard rockish metalish. If you're playing super clean, uh, you'll probably want to leave the Jet City speakers in there or go with another brand, but you, you definitely don't want Vintage 30s in there. Um, another thing with amp maintenance and even uh, speaker cabinet maintenance, your toilet is going to get dirty. Um, this is not a problem. Um, a lot of people say you can't use it. There's nothing wrong with using it. Um, you can use Pledge. Um, you can use Original Pledge, Lemon Pledge, so on, so on. But you only need a little bit. You don't need a lot. Just spray the rag once with it and wipe the whole amplifier down. That's all you need. Uh, if you spray too much, you're going to get moisture on your end caps, your screws, and they're going to rust. Um, Another thing uh, concerning the low end. Uh, if you're still not getting low low end like you want with um, the suggestions that I gave you, then uh, then it's time to resort to different things. But what I have here is I have a small rack mount set up. I got rid of most of my stuff. Um, but one good thing that's going to help you in your low end department is a BBE Sonic Maximizer, and that's this piece here on the bottom. Uh, the one I happen to have is a uh, 411 model. And uh, you have a gain, low contour, and definition knob. And then you have a process button, which is auto or manual, and a function in or out. This plugs straight into your effects loop. If you want more bass, you're going to want to turn your low contour up. Um, if you want a little more definition in it, uh, to where you can hear your pick attack better, turn your definition up a little bit. If a rack mount's not what you're looking for, BB also makes a pedal version of their Sonic Maximizer. It works great too. Uh, think about using that. And uh, if you see anything I didn't cover, if you see anything that you want me to talk more about, uh, leave me a comment and I'll get back with you and we'll talk about it. Or I'll make another video and I'll go over everything if I missed a lot, if you feel like I missed a lot. Um, I'm going to have some more videos coming up later. Um, be talking about uh, different things to do with amps, um, guitars, pedal boards, things of that nature. Uh, anyway, 
uh, I hope these videos help and uh, like I said if you have any questions comments leave your comments below thanks